come here, come here. The first round of the AFC Series 9 Brim Contest saw Team BCF triumph over Team Hobie with a five fish bag weighing 1.65 kilos. You guys win the match. Well done. <laughs> Today, Hobie is up against Team Irregard. A solid performance is essential for them to stay in contention. Foster turned on another spectacular spring morning with blue skies and a gentle breeze. The tide is an hour from the top, so the teams are keen to get started. Hobie, Scott Lovig from Victoria and local Daniel Brown have really got to score well today to keep their chances alive. They scored only five points in round one and need to get a full bag to stay in this competition. Ah, oh, damn it! Team Aragard's Russell Babacule knows Foster better than almost anybody and rack fishing oh, is his specialty. His partner, Victorian Black Brim champion Warren Carter, is excited to be paired with Russ. His other role is competitor relations, and he's no slouch when it comes to sledging. Boys, you're going down. Down river first, yep, that's right. <laughs> OK, gents, Team Hobie, Team Aragard, welcome to the second match of AFC Series 9. Your finish fishing time is 11 o'clock, and you can go in three, two, one, you're off. <laughs> Here we go, that side of the red marker, mate. Yeah, right. Deep of water over there. <laughs> well, this second match is vital for Team Hobie. They only took five championship points away from the first round and they're looking to make up some ground today. But Team Aragard, it's their first match and Russ Barbecue, he's the favourite on this arena. It's going to be great to see what happens. Really got to try and make the most of this high tide before it drops out. Yeah. Really got to try and make something happen in that first hour. Travelling out this morning, it was very calm still. The tide had a bit more of a push in, so we thought we'd go and hit a, a few spots where the tide would be pushing hard and, and maybe catch a couple of early fish. One of the most famous brim luring locations in Foster is the paddock. It's a broad expanse of oyster leases right at the mouth of the estuary. It's subject to a lot of the tides, currents and fluctuations that keep the brim positioned close to these poles. Team Hobie have decided to start today's campaign fishing washboards in the paddock. It's a home to some great big brim. Yep. Yep. That's not too bad either. That's a brim. Ah! Oh, no? Get at me! Did you drop in? Team Aragard's decided to start today's match here at the end of the Breckenridge Channel. Foster's a massive arena, but already we're seeing the teams are gravitating to certain spots in this arena. It shows you just how good these guys are at finding fish. The first spot I fish, it's only a very small area of racks. It's been really good to me in the past for getting those big fish. So we went straight there. We knew that it wasn't going to be windy, but when you can get that early morning bite, they're not so scared. Just keep trying to throw him between these rails. Russell really rules when it comes to rack fishing. It's really his backyard and it's his domain. I just find fishing natural banks and fishing flats is probably my uh, specialty. So I was happy just to let him go. First fish uh, came in the first uh, 20 minutes of fishing and the lure was cast right in tight to the rack. He was actually working that right, left to right, left to right, and before I could get a net out, the fish was in the boat. <laughs> go, Rose! So we're looking at... A 33 and a half fork. Mate, that's a ripper. Well done. Here you go, mate. We'll go catch you again. That big fish in the bag always settles the nerves, and if you can get a, a good fish in a bag, do you know that you're always going to go OK? Russ, I'm bringing that net out, mate, because... I don't use nets, <laughs> as you can see. 800 grams. Foster's my backyard. That's really where I cut my teeth. My passion for lure fishing really flared uh, at Foster here. I used to go out of a weekend in the canoe. I grabbed myself three lures, so I basically just went out paddling around in the canoe and self-taught. I just picked it up as I went along. The most important thing in my fishing, I suppose, is probably a casting accuracy. And I think that's just to do with the area I've grown up, fishing Foster all the time. If you're not within a couple of inches of where you want it to be, you're not going to get those bites. Time on the water is probably the most important thing. When I was 16, 17, I used to spend hours and hours and hours out perfecting different techniques and 
practicing little things that I could do to get that competitive edge. Now, I guess it just becomes a second nature after a while. You go into a tournament and you've just got to pick up those little tricks as you go along, and whether it be a little skip casting under a wharf or whether you're not actually casting at fish, you're throwing past fish so you don't spook them and pulling it back to them. Just those little things can make all the difference. It's 25 and a half. 26, that's rounded so you out. Make that a 26, eh? Russ, you're the man, mate. There's no flies on you, mate. <laughs> well, Team Aragard would think this is a fantastic morning. A light breeze blowing, a perfect morning in Foster, and they've already got two fish in the live well. Their first fish, Russ Babacool's 800 gram cracker, 34 centimetres to the fork. They'll be thinking today is fantastic. Two for five, 1,200. You got a razor blade, Brownie? I gotta open up my wrists. Big worry when you hear the phone going beep, 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 beep. Straight away, you know, the other boys have got a fish, and when you haven't got anything in the well yourself, um, you just you start, well, what am I doing wrong? Where can I go? What do I do? Yeah, there's a lot of things that start rolling through your mind. 